Swirling blue and white light descends into a deep, dark horizon. It sparks with deep, ancient magic that subtly shakes the ground surrounding its glow. If you stare at it long enough, you may think there is a form to the madness, but that's just your own madness creeping in, trying to justify order to your internal chaos. That's what's going through Zane Ashford's eyes as he stares down Haven's rest gate. He stands at the top of the five stone steps that lead up to this 15 foot tall portal. He swallows hard as his two comrades from the Obsidian Order walk up, standing on each side of Zane. Well, you look at that, Kaid, the portal to civilization. The soldier to Zane's left says as he slaps his hand on the back of Zane's shoulder, almost knocking Zane forward. Zane panics for a second as he regains his footing. A few feet further, he's through the gate. It's just Orden fell, Evan. Cade replies. He adjusts his hands as he carries a small wooden crate. The gate doesn't take you anywhere interesting. Now, Sunspire, that's take worth taking a gate to. Continuing the conversation as if Zane isn't even there, Evan says, I'm partial to Falcon's Reach myself. High up in the sky flying peaks, you can see all Caldor from up there. How do you get there? Cade asks. You take the gate from Sunspire to Ashburn, which takes you to Falcon's Reach. But honestly, anything is better than this shitty little town. Evan says, looking down at Zane, still staring in the bright blue magical circle before him. Don't you think, Zane? Zane swallows hard. He shifts his weight as he holds his own small wooden crate in his arms. Which do you think is better? Uh, yeah, uh, Sunspire uh, sounds nice. Zane shakes while he talks. Ah, uh, told ya! No one wants to go to hiking in the mountains! Come on, watch the hold up, yells the captain from below. Captain Nix Raven Shadow, a stout elder dwarven captain of the Obsidian Order, is signing some papers and then hands them back to the scribe positioned at the bottom of the stairs. Sorry, sir, Zane's first time, Cade replies. Private, it's just the arcane highway, the captain yells back as he's handed more paperwork. You don't even have to think through to your destination. The gate only goes to Ardenfell. Easy peasy. Easy peasy, Zane whispers and repeats back to himself. Evan leans down towards Zane. You first. Zane gulps and slowly steps forward. The magical energy is starting to vibrate Zane's armor. He feels goosebumps on his arms as the energy begins to envelop him. Zane looks back at Cade and Evan. Cade nods his head as if to say, go on. Zane looks worried on his face. Cade and Evan step back, realizing Zane was afraid they push him in. Zane sighs a sigh of relief as he looks back at the gate again. He closes his eyes and repeats to himself, Easy peasy, easy peasy, easy peasy. He steps in. The ding, ding, ding of the tiny bell of Granny Millie's general store might as well sound like a funeral bell to Alora. An elderly gentleman with white hair on the sides of his head, a pair of spectacle of circular spectacles, wearing an old fur-lined cloak, and leaning on a simple cane shuffle in. It's Gunther again, for his weekly groceries. Hanging from his free arm is a small wicker basket. He sees Alora behind the counter. What? Do, who does he? Who does he, he see? What is? What does Alora look like? She's uh, pink. She's a little bit short, maybe like five, five three ish, um, and she's got short green hair that she wears in a little bob, little deer looking antlers that have little leaves on them, and she's got some freckles all along her upper face, and she's got a maybe a little bit of a resting bitch face. I can curse, right? <laughs> oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred thousand fucking percent. <laughs> I figured, I was like, wait, I should maybe yeah. ask. <laughs> um, and yeah, she's got a little bit of a resting bitch face. It's not how she means to be, but it's just kind of like her normal face while she's while she's staring, and she's just kind of like, all right, what does this guy want? Okay, okay. So uh, before we kind of get even into the story, we're gonna do a little bit of a uh, of an autism check uh, for you. 
So the way it currently works with it with uh, with the sort of McAdini mechanics for autism is that the sort of at the end of a long rest, the, the, you start off with two uh, points of stress, um, and then I'm going to have you roll a wisdom saving throw. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So you do start off with an eight with basically at an even level amount of stress. Uh, so basically, the way it works is that if if, if she got below a ten, um, then you basically add a point of stress already for the day. So you'd be starting with three out of five. If you get to five, that's when a full on, like a full on meltdown will happen, and you would have to sort of either stim to sort of uh, basically uh, release or you know, pass the meltdown, or um, that's basically that's the only thing you, you could really do, or anything to be able to do some self care t- within that moment. Otherwise, you're not able to move. You're not able to do any other action other than self care. Okay. Um, but so far, you're good. You only have uh, two points, uh, so you're you're totally you're totally fine. Um, and then, as Gunther kind of walks in, he kind of just shuffles around. You know, you've you've seen his sort of pathway he takes. He goes all the way along one aisle, goes up and down the other, and it just it's a slow, boring, very tedious pace. And so, I want you to roll an inside check for me. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. So. He looks back at you. You're st- you're kind of like leaning up against the counter, uh, in behind the counter, and he has like a look of like quiet politeness. Uh, like he, he's dealt with you before, and he knows it's just best to not make small talk as he's what to do. Um, I gotta give him credit for that. Yeah. So he's again. He slowly picks out his groceries, and uh, he asks you, "Look oh, dear. Do you know the cost of bananas? And you know, he's asked that question so many times. So what, 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 what do you say? What does it cost the bananas? She's just going to kind of stand there with her arms crossed and roll her eyes. And she's like, Gunther, I told you this last time. Don't you remember? My memory is so small. Could you really help an old man like Gunther, please? Gunther, could you, do you have a notepad that you can maybe write it down for next time so that you know? I think <laughs> I forgot my notepad at home. That uh, makes sense given the memory issues you've mentioned. Well, bananas, it depends on which ones you pick. <laughs> I would like to be able to have two bananas. Two bananas. So I have to separate them from the rest of the bunch. That's going to be... Me trying to remember the, the you currency. Can, you can basically just gold. pick like gold. So there's like okay, yeah. there's yeah, copper, like silver, here. or gold. Okay. Ten, 10 silver is a gold, uh, and at ten copper is one silver. Okay, it's gonna be ten, ten silvers each. Oh, okay. Thank you. I have panic. just I have just enough change for today, and I think I have a coupon. And he goes back into basically to this to, to shuffling through. Uh, I want you to roll a performance check to kind of see. How much you're able to keep your social anxiety at bay? Twenty-eight. Let's 28. go. Twenty-eight. Okay. Ah. You are able to hold back the chaotic energy that is all that is in you, and you do sound as polite as possible. Uh, and when and uh, and basically, Gunther now comes to you, and he like at least one at a time puts his little items of groceries on the shelf and. He says, oh, I got a coupon for that. And he puts out like a little piece of parchment with basically like, it looks like potentially like, like his wife's handwriting, but you can't really tell. And it's just, it's definitely not great. Like Granny Millie's uh, writing at all. Uh, and But uh, he still puts it down beside it. And you are able to like ring through his groceries and ve- very easily able to keep the chaos at bay. But it's just hinting in the back of your mind that you would rather be anywhere but here but you don't want to make a scene again. Yes. So you're totally, totally doing fine. Um, also, actually, you know what? I want you to roll a perception check for me as well okay. as you're ringing up the groceries. 21. Wow. These okay. Are, this I is great. This. I love this. All right. So as, you, as you're waiting for him to be able to, like, you're taking one item and then you're waiting for him to be able to put up another item. You, you take a look out uh, towards the window of the store and outside the window you see like a like a teenage boy uh, like looking a little too intently at the uh, at the honey the jars of honey that are in the window um, and it is Granny Millie's special honey 
and he's just looking kind of like staring almost intently at it. But special not really. how? Well, it's it's special however you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, just what's big. in that? Honey? Let's just say in the town of Haven's Rest knows Granny Millie's special honey. Granny and Millie's it's, lit. <laughs> it is very it is very popular uh, jar of honey. Let's just say that. So do you need an ID to purchase said honey? <laughs> Yes, okay. essentially. Well, it's sort of like a Granny Millie kind of knows a lot of people in the town. So sometimes she asks for it, sometimes she doesn't. Got it. So okay. it's one of those. Uh, but yeah, you know, he's just staring there intently. So you you you, uh, you you basically put together all Gunther's groceries. You put it in his little basket, and he just kind of like just shuffles, uh, just kind of shuffles uh, off uh, in, outside the outside the store. Um, and then Granny Millie, uh, an Alvin woman in her late hundreds. Uh, comes out of the back room towards uh, towards you. Uh, she's tall and handsome. Uh, the way she looks is almost dependent on the person who is looking at her. To some, she has a look of a stern woman who you don't want to get in trouble with. She can whip your ass if she if you look at her wrong. To others, and Alora would be in this latter category, Millie looks like a sweet granny who instead of learning the finer things in life as elves of her kind often do, She's very content making honey that she harvests from her little beehive in the back of the general store with some special ingredients as well. And and selling goods to all of the people of Haven's Rest. And the and also, because of that honey, some visitors from some few far off places as well as they come through the gate, which is the arcade highway connecting to Haven's Rest. In her hands is a small, tightly wrapped box. She walks up and places the box on the counter. Now, Alora, I have a very important task for you to do. You must deliver this important package to the wife of Lord of the Lord of Haven's Rest. And that is Lord Rowan uh, Everhart. You know him to be Lord Rowan Everhart, um, who's basically like the town mayor, and his home is in the Gems, which is like the richest part of town. Uh, and and Granny Millie like, kind of like, puts her hand on the on the packages and she's like, I need you to take care of this. Do not drop it, do not break it. Understand? Alora, she's got kind of a face of like, uh, I don't know that I understand, but she just kind of nods really quickly to compensate for it. Like, yeah, okay. got it. Why don't you roll an inside check for me? Oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, what? I got a five. A five, okay. My first really bad roll. <laughs> uh, all right, you can tell that Mil the Gran Granny Millie like seems serious, but it's just sort of like, uh-oh, like what do I, what do I, what am I supposed, what do I do? And you can start to kind of like sense a little bit of that chaos kind of start to creep in a little bit more than, uh, than before. Uh, but uh, Granny Millie kind of continues on now. Now, Laura, I must warn you, you must be on your best behavior because Lord Everfall, Everhard is not fond of you due to your past misadventures. Alora kind of crosses her arms and rolls her eyes and she's like, yeah, well, I'm not a fan of Lord Everhart either. <laughs> she kind of like rolls her eyes a little bit. And it's like <laughs> kind of in that, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, actually, as you kind of like now, you take a look at the package uh, that, that's, that's on the, on the counter. Uh, why don't you make an investigation check for me? Investigation. Investigation. 21. 21, okay. Uh, so you can actually be able to kind of look at it. You, you can sense there's actually like a faint magical aura inside. Um, and yeah, you can't really tell what though. And you can ask Grant if you want, but it, uh, what, what, what's... Uh, any questions that you have about about this sort of important task? Alora's just gonna look right up her and be like, "What is this? What's in it?" Uh, well, she says, "It's just a harmless little trinket that the the, the uh like uh, the Lord's wife is very fond of uh, our products, you see, and it's just a harmless little thing." She's gonna look right at her again and be like, "Why does it seem like it's magic, though?" <laughs> Don't you pay it any other mind. You have a task. I expect you to deliver this package promptly and without damage this time. Laura's just gonna nod and be like, okay. But in her mind, she's thinking about how she wants to open that package. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, all right, and so Granny like kind of hesitantly like, she kind of walks back towards her, uh, uh, towards her 
uh, back room. She has like a, a few like homunculus servants that uh, she has to kind of come up in behind the counter. So she it, like it takes over for you. So you can be able to go and, and, and do this task. Uh, and so what do you do? Well, now that no one's in sight, Alora's gonna kinda, she's looking at the box, she's kinda thinking about, is there a way I could sort of peek in this without anyone being able to tell that I looked? Okay, okay. Um, why don't you roll another investigation check for me? 15. 15, okay, okay. Um, you can definitely like you kind of give it like a tiny little shake. You can kind of hear a little bit of uh, of uh, uh, some ceramic uh, like in there, like um, potentially maybe like some sort of like china, maybe. Uh, but you can't really like can't really tell 100. Uh, percent But that you could definitely feel that kind of that magic sort of like shimmer uh, from it from inside. Really, she's not gonna open it yet but she is gonna prepare to, to head out and make this delivery. Okay, okay. Um, so as you as you exit the uh, um, uh, the store, you, you kind of didn't notice, but uh, all of a sudden that teen that was in the window, uh, it kind of uh, comes out from behind you as you're, as, you're, uh, as you're exiting. And he starts to take off. Uh, and like it, it, it like it basically like down the, towards the courtyard, toward, basically towards the gate. Why don't you roll a perception check for me? Done. Fifteen. Fifteen. He's got a jar of honey. And you know he didn't pay for it. What do you do? She books it after him and she starts yelling, put that down, you didn't pay for that. I'm gonna get you, you little shit. Okay, so I want you to roll uh, either athletics or acrobatics to start to be able to, uh, to chase after him. Athletics. 25. 25, okay. <laughs> so the team like, basically starts uh, ducking and dodging through like different carts and stuff like that because the courtyard is very busy this morning. Uh, you're in kind of that that sort of that central uh, marketplace of the town and he starts to kind of like, like to tip over a few like uh, cartons of like oranges uh, and you're, but you're able to kind of like jump over them and kind of like you're you're gaining some ground on us. Uh, and so now I want you to, to roll a specifically an acrobatics check as there's now obstacles around you. Six. Six. Okay. So you like and he kind of like uh, pulls a, a, across a, a, a cart. There's kind of like just kind of like blocks it in your way, and it, you just and, and you're not able to react in time. So you kind of bump into it, uh, and then so. But now you feel like the package start to kind of like crunch in between your body and the uh, and the wood and wooden cart. So I want you to roll uh, specifically. And this is basically there's going to be some regular pa like package damage checks. And I want you to roll a D4. Three. Three, okay. So you roll a three, so basically that is a success. Anytime you roll above the halfway point, that means it's like you're you're, you're fine, you're not gonna be able to, uh, to get any more damage, but the more you potentially hurt this package, the more the dice goes up, uh, and the more potential like for you to be able to, to fail that roll. So, uh, so you're, 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 you you take like you see him kind of duck underneath the, like or into an alleyway, uh, and then uh, what do you do? She kind of she continues trying to go after him and follow him, and she's still shouting and yelling like, "Hey, get back here!" Okay, okay. So as as you do, um, I basically uh, you're kind of like uh, he kind of like ducks around it, but as you're about to like do spin turn and into basically toward uh, towards the alley, uh, there is like a, a a a woman that basically kind of like walks past it. You kind of just uh, uh, you kind of almost about to br brush into them. So I want you to roll an athletics check for me. Fifteen. 15. Okay, so you don't, so you accidentally kind of bump into her shoulders, but you don't trip and fall, uh, and uh, and you kind of like, you kind of look back at her. She kind of like is, is very, extremely startled. Uh, do you say anything or? She's like, Excuse me, ma'am. Okay. It just uh, keeps going. All right. Uh, and then, uh, so yeah, so you, you, you finally track him down. Thankfully, this teen is dumb, and he basically finds himself in a, in a dead end alley, and you see him basically like, as he turns around, and you're now standing in front, like in the, uh, at the at the front of the alley. What do you do? Like drop it gently, because otherwise it might break. But you better drop it. Uh, uh, but 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 uh, but I need it for for my for my mom. She's she's sick. 
and 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 she, and, and she needs to, like honey to put into her into her tea. Alora's gonna kind of suspiciously raise an eyebrow, and she's like, "What's your mom's name then?" Uh, uh, Jill. And I want you to roll an insight check for me. Eleven. Uh, you can't tell if he's t if he's lying or telling the truth, unfortunately. She's gonna kind of shake her head and be like, "Well, that's tough luck, but we have a business, so you need to give that back." Okay. So uh, you can either roll uh, an intimidation or a persuasion check, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna go intimidation. Okay. Six. Six. Uh, okay. So as like he's like he kind of he's standing there, and it's almost like a, like a little bit of a standoff. He darts up toward, towards the the, uh, the wall that was kind of like in the dead end, and it just literally just jumps super fast over the wall, and unfortunately now he just got. Alora just is kind of like, she takes her little dead lizard out of her. She wears this belt. She's got a little pouch. She has a dead lizard in there. It's her best friend, Stripe. She takes him out and holds it and starts kind of petting his back and is like, well, Stripe, another one got away from us. Oh, well. And then she puts him back and she just kind of goes back to continuing to deliver the package. Okay. All right. So as you make your way out of the uh, the marketplace, now there's a bit of chaos because uh, there's just been so much going on and uh, uh, like with uh, like this this stupid little, little boy, the little child that's just kind of running off. Um, and uh, there's like an old woman that is uh, trying to cross the street. Um, and as you're like uh, as you're kind of walking towards uh, basically out of the marketplace, uh, uh, she asks for uh, for help. Uh, is there uh, like is there anything you want to do? Alora kind of looks at her like quizzically and she's like help with what she well she's kind of old and she has like a little cart that she's like trying to get like across the street and it's super slow but it's like there's a lot of like traffic kind of like going in and out and you can tell it's like it's like a, kind of like helping an old woman across the street sort of deal Alora's like how can i help you cross the street she's not understanding what this woman's asking uh, I, I, I just, I can't make it up the curb, you see. Um, and I just, I can't, I, I need to be able to get to the, to the market today in order to be able to pick up my, my, my groceries. Alora just kind of pauses for a second and then she kind of looks like she just thought of an idea and she goes over and she tries to scoop up the lady to carry her. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> why don't you make a, a strength check then? 14. 14, okay. Uh, as you kind of like pick a, a pick her up, uh, and I guess you kind of hold on to the card to kind of like, the, the, yeah. so, uh, and she's like, oh my goodness, woo, and she's like, she's almost like, she's having a good time, and, uh, and you're able to like, you get across the street, and, uh, and she's basically like, you gotta put her down, and she goes, thank you so much, my dear, and you can, and she kind of like, grasps onto your hand, and you can actually feel like a little bit of like a, like a magical spark, uh, in your hand, uh, and she goes, thank you so very much, I really do appreciate it. And she kind of like just slowly walks away, um, and uh, she gives you a little bit of luck. Oh! So and it basically means you have advantage on a uh, any future role that uh, that you want. Thanks, old lady. I thought it was gonna be like she was using a glamour, and she's actually like not who she seems. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, so then uh, so as you're kind of like uh, um, you're walking towards basically the uh, you're walking through like the ferry docks. Um, which basically is like is more like the ship's harbor kind of area, uh, and as as you do so, um, you see a, a a dwarf captain uh, that is uh, that is kind of like walking with a little bit of regiment. You recognize him as Captain Nix Raven Shadow, uh, and he is the, the head of the Citadel, who's head of the Obsidian Order of the Regiment of Soldiers in this town. You do not want to be seen by Nix Raven Shadow right now, and I want you to describe. What would be a reason why he would not, what you, like, he would not want to see you specifically at this moment? Alora can sometimes struggle a little bit with her manners and with understanding how respect is supposed to work when someone is in a position of authority. So it's very likely that she's probably offended him by being too casual or by not calling him the right thing or something like that without realizing. Okay. All right. Uh, so as you're kind of like, as you get, as you clock, uh, like, uh, uh, as, as you clock him. Why don't you roll a, a stealth check to see if you can be able to kind of get away? Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Uh, so as you're like trying to find like a, a place to just hide, he sees you uh, walking uh, walking up towards him. He goes, "Alora." She's like 
she looks down at her little lizard on her hip and she's like, uh oh, Stripe, I think we're in trouble. <laughs> you're darn tootin' you're in trouble there, Missy. You remember what happened last time and you got away. You see nothing. That's just your response. You see him like with like with a little bit of like a like a hint of a smile on like a grin on on his face. He goes, <laughs> Oh, I think my eyes are fine. <laughs> What do you have there? And she got a kind of note, like uh, notions towards the the package. This is private, and I don't need to tell you what it is. Well, I think that the privacy is is, is up to you know the obsidian order, and I don't trust you as far as I can throw you. What is in the package? Well, how far do you think you could throw me? Pretty far. Do you want to test the, uh, that luck? No, I just, I think you just, you're just a little guy, so I don't really know how you'd be able to throw me all that far. I don't really understand. You can see he kind of like bristles a little bit of that because, you know, he's, he's, he's been around the block quite a bit. And it's like, but still like when anyone calls him short, especially someone so young, <laughs> it kind of like ruffles, ruffles his feathers a little bit. So I want you to roll an intimidation check to kind of see uh, how, how well that is for Lance. 18. 18, okay, so he's gonna roll. Okay, roll the 16 on the die. Okay, so, so he's kind of, uh, so he uh, kind of, um, uh, he just kind of like, like kind of swallows his pride a little bit. He goes, let me guess, that's from Granny Mally. I, Granny who? I don't know anyone named Granny. I don't, huh? I don't have a grandmother. I was raised in the woods. He, he has like a bit of spectacles on, so he kind of does like, he kind of holds the bridge of his nose and he goes, I know you work at Granny Millie's general store. Why are you being so difficult? She's just kind of like, I don't know. She just acts really confused. She's like, I don't, difficult. Granny, Granny Millie, general store. And she's trying to like stall and, and buy some time while she thinks of a way to get out of here. He kind of like, Ugh. I don't have time for this. Just cool. <laughs> and just like shrugs. She's like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and but but and as you kind of like cross paths, he's kind of like walking back like uh, towards the, the direction you came from, and you're walking towards uh, towards the gems. And he, uh, he goes, I'm keeping my eye on you, dearly. She's like, I don't know how you're going to do that because you're passing by me and I'm not even going to be here. So I was, but I mean, okay. Uh, he like, I really sighs like, Ugh, and just kind of like just walks away. Uh, and so as you kind of like, uh, as you kind of like, you now are walking sort of past the, the ferry docks. Um, you, uh, you actually kind of walk past the gate and you kind of walk in towards the gems, which is like a very beautiful, opulent sort of, uh, a kind of like area, like a lot of like really fancy houses, and you see uh, Lord uh, Ever uh, Ever Hearts or Ever Farts House, uh, kind of like one of the biggest on the block, uh, and uh, and you kind of go up to like uh, the guards rec recognize you, uh, and and basically like it kind of like almost like stops you a little bit. Uh, what do you say? She says, "I'm here to deliver this package to Lord Ever. For I mean, the Lord Everhart." She kind of like looks at you, looks at the package, and she kind of like lets you like lets you through without saying a word. And you uh, you walk up to uh, to the front door uh, of the house. What do you do? She's got to take a quick moment to sort of do a deep breath in and out because she knows that it's she doesn't like this guy. She's not gonna want to enjoy interacting with him, but she knows she has to. So she kind of like grounds herself and then she reaches up to knock on the door. Okay. Uh, all right, and you, so you can see uh, the door opens, and it's one of the assistants to to, uh, to uh, Lord Everhart, and uh, and sees you, recognizes you right away, and she go, and, he, and he goes, "You best be on your best behavior. He's in a bit of a mood today." Alara kind of rolls her eyes, and she's like, "Is he ever not in a mood?" <laughs> you hear that sigh a lot lately, and it's just you like. Uh, what do you think of when you hear that sigh from people? Alora just doesn't really get it. She's like, I feel like I'm making perfect sense, and they're the ones not making sense. Okay. Uh, and so I, 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 
what I want you to do, you have a little bit of chaos kind of starting to build, uh, and I want you to roll just a straight intelligence check for me. 21. Okay, so as you are, uh, I, I, like, yeah, as you are sort of trying to calm yourself down, you're kind of waiting in the, in the sort of foyer as, as uh, the assistant try, uh, goes to get the the, uh, the Lord Everhart, and uh, you, you think you, as the chaos is starting to kind of like build in and but you let you hear in the back of your head, Granny Millie's words, be on your best behavior. And you're able to kind of hold a little more of the chaos at bay. So when you, uh, the uh, Lord Everhart kind of like uh, comes in and uh, recognizes you and he goes, Alora, it is a pleasure to see you today. What can I do for you? She just kind of like grits her teeth and is trying really hard not to call him Lord Everhart. And she just goes, Mm. And she holds out the package. Delivery. And who, may I ask, is this for? The person I'm handing it to. Why don't you roll persuasion check for me? <laughs> Nine. Nine? Okay. Uh, he, he hesitantly kind of grabs the package sees that on the tag that's on, on the package and sees that it's for his wife. And he goes, ah. And then goes to assistant kid, like, can you bring the lady over to, like, and, and, and then you gotta wait a few minutes uh, in silence as he just sort of stands there kind of holding the package. What do, what, what do you do? She's just kind of like standing there, like feeling it's so awkward. And then she can't resist the need to kind of talk a little bit to her, her little lizard and go, straight, this is really awkward. I think you kind of like the mayor. Like, oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a little bit of a check for that to see if you actually really hear that. Uh, a little bit of perception check. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, he doesn't hear it. He doesn't hear mumble at all. So he's just kind of like still waiting, kind of like just inspecting the package a little bit. So good thing is he did not hear uh, what you you talking to your lizard. So uh, the lady kind of comes in and uh, and she goes, "Ooh, hello, Laura, dear. How are you today?" Laura looks up and just goes. <laughs> you can tell like she's been nice to you in the past like the lord basically like you're the rowan he's like he doesn't care he's like whatever he's got other things to do but like uh, uh the lady of the house is like very very kind to you even amidst, amidst all the chaos and uh and do you hand her the package yes yeah, she's okay. kind of nodding and, and then hands her the package and then goes again delivery oh, oh very lovely and she opens it oh it's from granny bailey and she starts like kind of opening up the package uh, and you can see that uh, basically because of the like we had very minimal damage, which is good. Uh, you, there's some slight denting on the outside, but when she when you open up, when she opens up the box, she see you actually. Uh, why don't you roll a perception check to see if you can be able to see inside? Four. Okay, so you kind of see a little bit of like the top of uh, a tea set uh, that's in like you see the top of like the tea kettle, uh, but that's about it. And she but she kind of like picks up one of the uh, the glasses. Uh, and like it's all like very dainty, very like kind of like very looks like would have been very fragile. And uh, you can see like a little bit of a magical glow to it. You don't really know what it is, but she's like, Ooh, I've been expecting this from out of town. And she, and she basically goes, thank you so very much. Rowan, hey, the hey, good girl. And he goes, uh, okay. And he basically like tosses you like a little bit of a, 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 a coin purse. And uh, you look inside, it's basically like like two gold and like a couple silver. And it goes, thank you for delivering the package. Please tell Granny Millie, we appreciate her patronage. Alora's gonna kind of look around at how the place seems really nice and she kind of holds up the little money bag and shakes it and is going, this sounds a little bit light. Ro like, <laughs> uh, I, I, like Rowan is like, just kind of like starting to kind of get a little angry, but the lady is like, Rowan, pay the girl properly. And he's like, they growl it, grabs another uh, a coin purse and kind of just throws it at you. It's got basically the same amount of uh, coinage that's in there for, uh, for free as well. So. Well, or not, and she's like, that'll do. He mumbles like, that'll do. And he just, the, the assistant kind of like ushers you outside the door. So you you make your way back to uh, to Granny Amelia's uh, store uh, and, uh, and you see her like kind of behind the counter helping out. Uh, a family, uh, and as they exit, you kind of uh, you approach the, the counter, uh, and Granny goes, "So, how did it go?" 
it was really, it was hard, but I was good. And they gave me extra money. Oh, did they? They did. You must have been on your best behavior then. I was. But I want to know what that teapot was. What was it? She's pushing oh. her The lady of the house has been wanting a very nice tea set from, Ar uh, from Ardenfell. Hey, I don't know anything more about it. Can Elora, uh, like, an insight check to see sure. if she's lying? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, as far as you know, she's like, yeah, it's just a tea set. That's it. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then basically Granny kind of goes back into uh, the back room and you resume your shift in behind the counter, ready for another somewhat doldrum day. And that's it. <laughs> Yay, I did it. Yeah, you were you were chaos. Yes. <laughs> the urge was bubbling. <laughs>